Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. In today's episode, we're continuing on with our VGC Series 9 content. So today's team is from a player who goes under the username Sletang. I I'm, I'm really hope I am not mispronouncing that. I'm pretty much sure I am. So big apologies there, but I'll put all the socials on the screen now. You can have a look at the tweet. Uh, big shout out to Miguel as well for kind of pointing me in the direction of this team. This team in Series 18... Uh, I actually got to a score on the doubles rank ladder of 1950, which is pretty high, finishing in the top echelon of players and also topped out the showdown ladder as well. So the team's pretty strong. It's real privilege to be able to kind of feature it today. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. And um, big shout out to the creator of the team, obviously, and Miguel again for um, pointing us in the direction. But the big thing is, if you can see behind me, is the physical Tapu Fini, which I think is super interesting. Got the life orb there, the ice punch, play rough, and waterfall. So not your convention Tapu Fini that you're kind of seeing in the format at the minute with Calm Mind and kind of slowing games down, setting up and all sorts of shenanigans with Muddy Water. Uh, going for a, a way more physical set, especially with the Alive Orb. So it's going to be interesting to see how that kind of functions. You've got the support from the Raichu, obviously redirection from the, the Ndidi as well. And then you've got the Tailwind kind of set up and Swagger um, combination there with the Tornadus as well, which works perfectly with the Misty Terrain from Tapu Fini. Really nice team, really looking forward to getting into it. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Another new as well obviously i've had a haircut for the first time i'm pretty excited about it in like a year and a half an official haircut obviously tash has been doing like her best to kind of keep my hair in check but today i managed to get to the barbers and actually have a haircut which is which feels really nice so win-win other news is uh, players cup through players cup four emails went out i did qualify so we'll be doing some coverage around that obviously got the um joe has set up the uh, x9 draft league as well so i'll have videos coming on that i'm going to do an overall kind of look at everyone's teams and like preparation match uh, for round one which will be coming next week so keep an eye out for those very excited about that though um, and we'll continue with the series nine content thank you so much to everyone that suggested teams if you've got rentals and things like that we'll make sure we get through them if you've got rentals you'd like to see featured on the channel drop them down below and uh, i'll make sure to get them as soon as possible but with that friends Let's get into today's uh, episode. Let's get into our first battle of today. Okay, first up today, we have a Thunderous, Urshifu, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Landorus, and Metagross team. So a pretty solid looking team overall. You know, you've got the Intimidate, Fake Out support from the Incineroar, going to support most things on the team. Especially you've got that kind of combination between the Thunderous and the Urshifu as well. Imagining that that is going to be the, um, the single strike variant, dark type. Uh... And primarily going to be Thunderous is going to be like the main kind of Pokemon that's looking to probably max on this team. I mean, you can't discount like the Metagross as well. Um, but just generally quite a solid team overall. I think like Raichu helps us out a bunch because it disrupts the the the, uh, the Thunderous and, and that lead there. Um, Tailwind's a nice option for us as well because we can kind of get Tornadus in, get the full protection, put a bit of pressure on the Urshifu, get our Tailwind kind of set up. If we want, got to be a bit careful around the opposing Incineral coming in. But we do have the faster fake out, so we don't need to worry too much about that. I think Tapu Fini as well is super nice. And then we'll round off with Banded Urshifu, which does pretty well against like Metagross, Landorus, um, and the opposing Urshifu if we're in an advantage, advantageous situation with uh, speed control at that point. So... Let's see. I mean, we've got plenty of speed control options on this team. I do like it. You know, you've got the Trick Room with the Stack Attacker. You've got Electro Web with Raichu. You've got Tailwind with the uh, the Tornado. So you've got plenty of options to kind of make sure that you're kind of uh, ahead of the game almost. Um, now, I'd imagine here what my opponent will probably do is either switch the Incineroar out or they will uh, keep it and try and fake out our Tornadoes to kind of shut down our Tailwind. But I think... What does Thunderous do? Does it just go for an airstream into Tornadus? Like it makes sense to kind of do that, but at the same time, you want to um, you want to try and uh, prioritize getting rid of the Raichu, so it frees up the the electric type stabs that you've got access to. Um, especially when it comes to something like Tapu Fini, we're not seeing the Incineroar switch out, uh, so it looks like it went for the taunt, and it's uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a prankster, it's a prankster. Thunderous. I always get caught up. Always get caught out by this. Um, okay. Well, we can't taunt. Uh, that's pretty. That's not ideal. That is not ideal. 
Uh, we can electro web, but it's probably better just to vault switch out onto the thunderous. Maybe switch out into Urshifu here. So I don't want to bring Finny onto the field just yet. Like, you could argue that it's not a bad idea to bring Finny onto the field, but kind of Finny's going to be our main kind of um, attacking option on the team. I think it's better that we kind of preserve it and get it in fresh. Um, so I'm going to bring in Tornadus again. There's not much chance that the, the, the Thunderous goes for something like an electric type attack here. But yeah, just disregarding the fact that we've got Raichu out on the field and going for a Thunderbolt. Okay. The position that we really need is this next turn is to switch Urshifu out for Raichu and then have that fake out Tailwind uh, that we want to try and take advantage of. The other option that we've got potentially is... is um, just go for a wicked blow into the tornadoes here and maybe pull Raichu onto the field. Because the only attack and presence that, that Thunder Thunderous is going to have is Thunderbolt. Um, if we can disrupt that. Raichu's got the Sash so it can kind of come in. And once we get rid of the Taunt, then it frees up tornadoes to have a way easier time. Like it's not going to worry about these like taunt pranks or taunts or anything like that. We can get a Tailwind set up. Um, so prioritizing getting rid of it. It's going to be the best thing to do. Okay, Taunt coming out again into the, the Tornado slot, which makes a lot of sense. Wicked Blow now going to be able to take down this Thunderous. And the likelihood is, like, I'm surprised that the Metagross hasn't maxed here, honestly. Expecting us to maybe go for, like, a Wicked Blow into that slot proc a weakness policy, but we just see an Iron Head come out, and um, it is enough. But it kind of paves the way at the same time for us to get Tornadus onto the field. And we have that active fake out again. So, see, it's all going to be down. Finny, I feel, at this point, like you never really like to lose like any Pokemon early on in the game, especially one of your big hitters, because uh, it puts a lot more pressure on onto something that you've got kind of <clears throat> sitting in the back uh, to come in. But I mean, Finny's not going to be in the worst spot. Um, just the Metagross with the weakness policy scares me a little bit, you know. We've got the fake out again into the Incineroar, and then we can we can definitely get our Tailwind up. But the question is, like at this point, is the Tailwind like super necessary? But we we still don't know what my opponent's got in the back uh, that could come in and be even more disruptive. The Gunker get up. can't get over the Thunderbolt. Uh, the previous turn, but never mind. It happens, doesn't it? It happens. Thunderous probably didn't really have too many other options, so just went for it. Just to click buttons, didn't want to switch out or anything like that. We're going to see the Metagross Max here. Um, be interesting to see what it goes for. Max Quake, maybe boost special defense. Makes a lot of sense. But are they going to attack into the Raichu or the Tornadus here? So you get that fake out into the Incineroar, get our Tailwind up, which is great. Um, and a Max Quake. Okay, so Special Defense boost in. So that's not really the worst case scenario for us, to be honest, because I think the big thing for us is, like, we know we've got the Physical Finny, so them boosting their Special Defense would normally be a bad thing. But in this situation, it's actually kind of, kind of good for us. That Metagross kind of tying itself up with these Max Quakes. Um, and I think what we'll do, just with Electro Web, I don't want to Volt Switch out because I want to, as I say, I want to get Finny kind of onto the field fresh and we'll just protect Tornadus this turn. Um, and it might prevent the Incineral going for something like Parting Shot into that Tornadus slot, which you would maybe expect. Maybe. Like a Parting Shot here wouldn't be great uh, from the Incineral into Raichu. We kind of need the Raichu to go down. So Steel Spike coming out. Okay, into Tornadus. Defense boost not ideal. And I'm probably going to see the parting shot. Oh, it's Snarl. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. So Raichu going to go down. And that paves the way for 
for Finny to come in and we can start that swagger spam. Um, so swagger boosted, boosted Max Geyser. That's going to be interesting. So we'll get a Misty Terrain up on the field, which is what we need for this Swagger Spam. Um, and we should be in a good spot. Like, the one thing that would worry me, like, I hope the Incineroar stays in and snarls. We'll go for the Geyser into the Metagross. We'll go for a Swagger into Tapu Fini. Plus two Waterfall. And then after that, in the next turn, we've kind of got the Momentum Swing where we've got the Tailwind up, we've got the Rain up, and we've got a plus two attack boosted Tapu Fini. Potentially plus one if we see like a parting shot into it. Because we're not like we're not taking anything down here. We got the option where we could take down Incineroar, which could be an option, but I kind of would like to just start concentrating a little bit more down onto the Metagross this this turn. So Swagger. Oh come on. That's like the oh, that's the worst that is the worst. Yeah, doing very, like, minimal damage. It's one drawback with Swagger as well, you know. You try and get the combination going, and Swagger is not the most accurate of attacks. Obviously, the defense boost as well for my opponent not helping us out a massive amount either. I just see Max Quake come in. We take that pretty well, but at the same time, it's not, we're not in the most ideal situation. That extra damage on Tomato Cross there would have been really, really useful as we see Snarl come out, which is, which is fine. Um, now the Metagross is finished its max turns, so I think that the, like that the the best play here is obviously going after the Incineroar. The Incineroar hasn't got protect, very unlikely to anyway. Metagross has got protect, so it make more sense for my opponent to kind of go after. I uh, got try and pivot out, try and readjust board positions, uh, protect the Metagross this next turn, especially knowing that the Swagger combinations there. So just got to hope that we kind of hit the Swagger this turn. We can get rid of the Incineroar. I'm pretty confident that we'll get rid of it regardless of Swagger hitting or not. It's just ni nice to spend a turn with Tornadus where we're not kind of wasting it. We do hit. There we go. There's that attack boost that we need. But getting rid of the Intimidate Abuser as well on my opponent's side of the field is also going to be kind of a nice nice option for us going forward. So there's the guys that into the Incineroar going to be more than enough to take it down. We've got one more turn of our max. Turns left. And my opponent down to the last two Pokemon. So... As are we. So Ironhead. Do take that just about. And the Citrus Berry coming in. Quite handy there for Tornadoes. So in a position where we can go for that Tailwind. If we need to this next turn. Because uh, obviously it's just pitted out. Um, I'm kind of surprised the Metagross didn't protect there. Potentially. But <clears throat> it's fine either way. Either way. Either way. Uh, okay. Poison Jab's always an issue. Um, on the Urshifu. We'll go for the Max Starfall. And you can kind of hope that maybe... Maybe the Urshifu sashed. But we need to Tailwind regardless here. But if it hasn't got access to Poison Jab, then... We're, we're sitting in a really nice spot. You know, the argument, the other argument is go, go after the Metagross here. But I do worry about Poison Jab being on the Urshifu more than anything. So, it is sashed. Which isn't great, but if uh, I can't see Tornadus sticking around this turn, unfortunately. Um, and Wicked Blow, where are we going? Tornadus. And I guess the one drawback here of not having something like Muddy Water is we can't just chip the Urshifu and then go after the Metagross the next turn. So Iron Head coming out. <sighs> oof, oof, oof. Not, not amazing. We'll take. Hmm. Should take another Iron Head. We're probably better off going after Metagross here. Probably we're better off going after the Metagross the previous turn and then dealing with Urshifu. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be very close to like what the Urshifu does. Yep, it detects, so that's good. So if we can get the Metagross here, then we're in an, an amazing spot. The one thing with the Metagross is it hasn't protected yet. We get it with a crit. Okay, I, I don't know if that mattered or not. Did it matter? We got the rain boost with plus one, considering that they are, uh, they got the plus one defense, so it kind of mitigates one of our boosts. Uh, but we're in that spot now. And um, actually, we're not going to even risk a player rough, because player rough, one of those moves as well, it can kind of come back to bite you. Uh, Sucker Punch coming out. Not going to be enough. 
unfortunately for my opponent. Um, but chat, do the calc on the Metagross. On an average Metagross, would we have got it? I don't know if we would have. The crit definitely came in handy. Finny going down as well. But what a way to end our first match of today's episode. It's a very good game to my opponent. An exciting one at least. And we got to see the Finny in action, which is what it's all about. So, like I say, very good game to my opponent. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, without further ado, we'll jump into our second match of today's episode. Okay, next up today, we have a Porygon 2, Torkoal, uh, Venusaur, Zapdos, Regirock, and Grimmsnarl team. It looks pretty nasty. You've got the whole team kind of running through with a Trick Room theme to it, you know supported by the Porygon 2 there. Uh, Torkoal and Regirock are going to be the kind of prime Pokemon that are going to take advantage of the Trick Room environment in particular. Probably looking at something like Curse Regirock, uh, either Leftovers, Weakness Policy options on there. Drain Punch, and you can, it looks, it's a hard team to break down because you've got the screen support from the Grim Snarl as well. It makes things very difficult. But the one thing that you could say that we have going for us a little bit is the, the Stack Attacker with our Trick Room. If we can get our Trick Room set up, we wouldn't be in a horrendous position to say the least but at the same time um we don't want to lead stack attacker out and then lead tall call uh because the eruption is going to do so much damage to us you know um i wonder i wonder what they're going to lead they're going to lead grim snarl yeah grim snarl i don't see tall call leading so we could potentially set a trick room up they could lead reggie rock could be a, a possibility um, and it's quite easy for my opponent to kind of bring in P2 as well and kind of utilize uh, the P2 in this match. I think we want Finny. I think we've got to bring Finny, and it's what we want kind of with it. I think we'll kind of round off with Urshifu. Urshifu feels like a good option to get rid of P2 if it is real disruptive kind of force and keeps reversing our trick room or just prevents us from setting it up or whatever. So. I think Urshifu is a nice option to come in, and especially if we get the Trick Room up, uh, we can remove something like Torkoal then. You know, Urshifu is still going to underspeed or outspeed in Trick Room, things like Zapdos and Venusaur, especially if the Sun's in in, uh, in effect. So, yeah, my opponent leading out with a pretty passive lead, but one that's, you know, it's not going to trouble us too much, but it gives us enough issues to kind of start thinking about things um, a little bit, especially with stacks. Do we go for the Trick Room here, or do we just go for like a gyro ball into grim snarl and go for like a spanning force and just allow my opponent to to kind of counteract maybe a trick room trying to be set up or just get some damage onto the field because they're not really threatening and threatening a knockout uh, early on i think i don't want to pull the trigger too early on um on maxing here i kind of prefer we can just get some damage with expanding force onto p2 uh, get a gyro ball off into the Grim Snarl, remove that from play. And I'd imagine the P2 maybe goes for the Trick Room here, so we kind of call on my opponent's bluff almost a little bit, a little bit, you know. Uh, expand Force doing some nice damage there, and yeah, the P2 going for that Trick Room, so taking full advantage of that, which is which is nice, you know. Uh, setting the Trick Room up for us, <laughs> where they're going to have to spend a turn this next turn reversing the Trick Room as well. Um... It's a shame that we got Ndidi out on the field because we could have almost went for we could have almost went for the Trick Room Trick Room play where we keep the Trick Room in effect, but we need to kind of try and get rid of the Grim Snarl at the same time to be able to to really kind of build that momentum. And with expanding force, is not really an option. So something to think about with Ndidi. You kind of see the stray one running things like Dazzling Gleam for this particular situation it's always a, a nice option you know and then you could go for that trick room trick room lock them into that play where they go for the trick room this next turn because you know for a fact that they are locked into going for it here but i mean we we, we get rid of the grim snarl pretty well and um we'll get another expanding force on obviously helped out a little bit now by the uh, the reflect that the grim snarl uh, eventually got up but actually not even reversing it gone for the ice beam so if our play had panned out it wouldn't have really helped us too much where we would have just reversed it for my opponent. Uh, so putting the advantage back into their favor almost. So yeah, probably not not a bad situation to be in with our trick room up right now. Um, and Reggie Rock, big, big Reggie coming in. Um, I think what we'll do, we'll try and get rid of the P2. I like the idea of going after P2. I don't really want to... Um, do we help in hand boosts? A gyro ball as well, or did we just go for expanding force? I feel like expanding force makes a bit more sense because at least we're getting like that, just consistent damage. Um, 
and a max steel spike we need to go for to boost our defenses of course uh we didn't max what are we doing okay well we didn't need to we get a crit there we get pretty lucky uh we'll get another defense boost which is phenomenal for us the crit's huge there i can't believe i didn't click the max button and the curse it's not what we want to see it is not what we want to see but it's not it's not terrible because we can potentially win this race to uh to get our defenses boosted up even quicker and the expanding force is going to be kind of something that will hit our outside of that and uh, like the single target that we've got here i mean, boosted by the psychic train makes for a good attacking option okay venusaur coming in now we need to double enter venusaur here now we need to go max steel spike uh, we've only got two of them left and, and expanding force again the venusaur might protect here but the likelihood is like most venusaurs don't generally carry protect um they normally opt for sleep powder as their fourth move so you're pretty safe in this, this situation kind of clicking into this attack problem is as well we've only got we've only got two um two two steel spikes to take advantage of to boost our defenses we can get three defense boosts for sure um with knockouts so you gotta hope that the venusaur isn't isn't sashed so we can kind of sneak another uh, beast boost this turn which would be which would be ideal but we'll see we'll see we'll see i mean it might have been better just go and help and if we're going down that route and really relying on it heavily we go down a we get help in hand where we don't knock it out with indeedy but i still think it's probably better to remove the venus or while we got the opportunity to take away the option for them to have something like sleep powder to to kind of fall back on in this situation because you put the stack attacker to sleep here um and things get pretty bad for us Oh, it's Venusaur maxing. Oh, we should have followed me. The Max Quake is going to just destroy us. Max Quake is actually going to destroy us. I'm not even kidding. Okay. Uh, that's not ideal. It's not ideal. I didn't think for a second they would max Venusaur, but it makes a lot of sense, you know? Dang. Okay. We need this expanding force. Ooh, drain punch. Okay, well, that's not so bad. It's not so bad. It's not so bad. The light screen helping out my opponent massively here. Spanning Force doing zip. Okay, the Vine Lash. We'll take that all day long. We'll take that all day long. I swear we'll take it. Yeah, okay. So the residual damage, not ideal, of course. But the Max Quake would have been way, 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 uh, we've got one more steel spike we can go for. Do we go into the Reggie Rock here and just go expand and force as well? Um, because we do have Urshifu. I think, yeah, we'll go for that. And then we'll go for the expanding force into the rock. And see. So, yeah. The drain punch isn't ideal, but I mean the defense boosts that we got. Okay, so max guard, ideal. Trying to stall out this trick room. If we can get the Reggie Rock here, they have got... A defense boost so it makes it a little bit more tricky especially with the reflect up as well they're probably going to go for um a drain punch again get some health back and there's a weakness policy which isn't brilliant like i will say um yeah this might knock dd out no okay the defense boost is helping us out massively they're not going to get a great deal of health back but they are have we got one more max turn i'm pretty sure we have Spanning Force, Venusaur, going to be able to take that. And yeah, the Reggie Rock's in, in range now at least. Um, hmm. The Trick Room end though. Have we got one more turn of Trick Room? I think we might have one. No, 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 that's Trick Room gone. That is Trick Room over. Um, okay, well. Let's go after the Venusaur. And let's go for a follow me. Follow me. Uh, the Venusaur will attack first. I don't think the Reggie Rock's going to be slower than Stack Attacker. That's the problem. So I think. Yeah, and a, a, a Drain Punch at this point will probably get us. Although it may not, you know. Venusaur's definitely going to be able to get the Indeedy. Max Vine Lash coming out once again. That's fine. Um, 
And I don't think one curse is going to be able to put Reggie Rock underneath, like, the speed bracket. Yeah, the Drain Punch coming out. But we take that with those defense boosts, which is which is phenomenal. Now, we get Urshifu on the field. Urshifu will be able to deal with both both of these with that ban. And Stack Attack has done an incredible job this game to kind of shut things down. Although we're not really uh, able to get uh, the Venusaur just yet. Um... But at the same time, I still think we bring in Urshifu. We get rid of the Venusaur, and then we've got um, then we got Tapu Fini to come in. And like, what you got to think of is if we get rid of the Venusaur this next turn, which we will, uh, the regirock has got like two options now. It can get rid of the Stack Attacker, which makes a lot of sense, or it can go for a Drain Punch into Urshifu, which is probably the more appealing turn, which then opens it all for us to go for a Body Press, which would be uh, the end game for us and be able to pick up the knockouts. So it's going to be pretty tough for my opponent regardless of what they do here as we'll just wicked blot into the Venusaur. Because they haven't got the sun, we don't need to worry about the Venu. Uh, Urshifu definitely going to be able to outspeed and pick up the knockout here. Uh, and if Urshifu sticks around on the field, it's going to be able to get those those critical hits into the, the Regirock the next turn, which is, you know, makes it way more manageable. So there we go. Wicked blow into Venusaur. We still got the... Um, there is a dual damage to kind of consider as well, you know. But I do feel like the Regirock probably goes after Urshifu here. Yeah. To get that get that big fat health back. It's going to get a lot of health back as well, you know. It's going to get a lot of health back. It'll be interesting to see how much this this body press does. It needs to do a lot. I don't know how many um, defense boosts we've got in total. Three? Yeah, not, not enough. Not enough. It's going to come down to... Oh, wow. It's going to come down to Finny. Finny versus Reggie Rock. Ooh. Yeah, and the residual damage stacking up. The one thing you can say is that, like, the Drain Punch isn't really going to be very effective against Finny. And we do have a way to, um, to flinch the old Reggie Rock. So it might be a win con for us. And, and in there somewhere, and amongst the RNG. Um, yeah, so we've got no options other than to click this, uh, this waterfall button. Hope we get a flinch. If we get one flinch, I think we might be alright. Be interesting to see how much this waterfall does though. Maybe what other options this Reggie Rock has. <sighs> not gonna it's not gonna it, another one's not gonna get it. Rock slide. We avoid! We avoid! Okay, that's that's super, super useful for us. Reflect wears off. Now we get it. There we go. Okay, so the reflect was the reason. The reason why. Um, yeah, so I forget about that, but there we go. Finny coming in, ending off the episode on a high after Stack Attacker doing all the work. Very good game to my opponent. Really nice team actually to face as well. Some curveballs in there obviously along the way, but uh, good game to butt. What a great username as well. Um, so hopefully, friends, you've enjoyed today's episode. We'll hop over now and remind you of the rental card for today's team. So here is today's rental team, friends. Hopefully, you give it a try. And I'm sure if you do, you will definitely enjoy it. Big shout out to uh, Slatang. And apologies if I'm pronouncing that handle wrong. I'm sure I am. But um, uh, do check out their socials. They'll be linked down in the description below. You can check out the post from the team and uh, see how it got on. And also drop them a follow because I'm sure they are going to have more juicy and amazingly put together teams in the future they've been smashing sword and shield recently by looking at their results so pleasure to be able to feature a team from them and uh it's been a lot of fun really enjoyed today's episode so i hope you have as well friends if you have leave a comment down below let me know and um thank you as always for tuning in Looking forward to getting into next week. As I say, we've got the uh, the X9 Draft League kind of beginning, so we'll have content ramping up with that. We've also got a flinch squad over on our Patreon uh, Draft League that's running at the minute, so we'll be covering matches from that, which is very exciting. And we've also got Players' Cup coming up as well. I believe we're going to get information on the 7th of June, so a few days' time. Uh, so once we do, I'll update you all with what the structure of that is going to be. It's going to be exciting actually playing it for once. Um, no spoilers <laughs> that I won't be commentating this time, but uh, kind of the email kind of spells that out. So it's going to be very exciting to see how I do in this one, obviously in a format that I think is quite diverse. I prefer it to the previous format, so I'm looking forward to it and it's going to be nice to kind of uh, follow my progress and hopefully it's something that you guys would be interested in following um, as I progress, hopefully through Players' Cup 4. So I'm um, going to end it there. 
Thank you so much as always for tuning in. Have a great weekend. Take care of yourselves more importantly than anything else. And I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.